Welcome back. This is Crash Course number 17 for Source 2. I'm Sammy Chimonahihi Aoyubi from the Eagle One development team. And I wanted to just uh, discuss a little bit more about uh, the displacement tool and how useful it is as we continue through our tutorial. Now, one of the things that uh, I added in the last tutorial was this little planter box. Okay, And the reason why I did that is so that it doesn't have any subdivisions on it, allowing us to make changes where we need. Okay, I can pull this up here. Uh, you can see that uh, by having this subdivided and this one not subdivided, it keeps it grounded. Okay, If I remove this, what's going to happen is if I manipulate the terrain, its edges are going to go way off. And later when it, when it comes to just uh, piecing this together, it might be a little difficult if I have all these edges up here. I'm going to have to sew them together and back. So I kind of I like having the uh, little planter box here uh, to kind of help us with keeping its shape for right now. <clears throat> okay. And then later on, we'll go ahead and we'll make sure that everything is uh, looking a little more natural. And one thing I do want to do, though, is uh, I do want to make sure that this portion uh, is going to be used to make a cave. So I am going to have to actually do some manipulation here. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to extract this. I'm going to press Alt-N. I'm going to separate this from the rest of the faces. And I'm going to take these two edges for right now and I'm going to press M to merge them back together so that it's uh, connected to this face here and not this face here. And you'll see why it's going to be important in a second. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to press T. I'm going to drag this up and by not having these connected now this face is independent. And it uh, looks like here I've got nice 128 by 128. I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift, uh, do the same exact thing. And uh, now here I've got a couple of pieces at 128 by 128. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to subdivide these. So select these faces. Let's go level two subdivision. And uh, now what I have here is the beginning of what I can use to build a cave. Okay. Selecting one of these faces, I'm going to press T and hold down shift and you can see I can drag and create a brand new uh, face on the interior uh, while also creating the adjacent walls and ceiling and floor. So uh, I now have here 128 by 128 squares. Uh, this cave is nothing more than uh, subdivisions that are running throughout. And I can go ahead and I can pull this out again just to give you guys an emphasis of how we would make that cave. Okay, to, to shape this, let's go ahead and press the Shift D while in the face selection mode and press B to bring up the smoothing tool. I'm going to switch the smoothing amount down here. Let's go 34 and uh, the radius, let's drop it down here to about 32. And uh, I'm going to hold down left click and I'm going to start to smooth this out. Okay, and what you're going to start to see is... <clears throat> what begins to look like the formation of a cave. And essentially all we're doing is we're taking these subdivisions and we're smoothing them so that the corners and the edges uh, give this cave-like appearance. Okay, we can, we can spend more time on this cave a little bit later as we add details. Uh, but <clears throat> by using this smooth tool and having these faces subdivided, uh, the, the more subdivisions that I have here at the entrance of the cave, the smoother it's going to look. So usually around uh, cave entrances, I like to keep it uh, you know, around subdivision level three, uh, two at the lowest, sometimes up to level three if I really want to get this detail down. Uh, but <clears throat> this is uh, essentially how we would create our cave when it comes to the process of uh, using the displacement tool. Uh, another thing that I can do is I, I can also, instead of in, uh, basically creating this little crevice, I can do the same thing with one of these, except I'm going to pull it up to create a, a, a hill. And actually, let's go ahead. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to grab these two. I'm going to hold down shift. And I'm going to pull it up about 128. Uh, around what would be that region. And uh, you can go ahead and see that now I've created a, a little bit of a, of a plateau. I can uh, increase this a little bit higher. Same thing. Let me just do one more level as we begin to see holding down shift and extruding uh, can give us some now interesting shapes to work with. So if I go to displacement tool, uh, faces, shift D. Now, if I really wanted to try, I can, I can pull this down. I can now smooth it. If I, if I wanted to give this uh, something that the player could walk on, I could really try to, to make sure that this ramps up. So over here, let's do this. Let me pull this up. And uh, now what you're starting to see is by manipulating the edges, the vertices, the faces, and using the, the tools of the displacement, 
uh, features that we have, uh, you can pretty much get anything that you want shaped. Um, but I'm just going through and smoothing this to try to make this look a little more natural. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another thing I can use is uh, if I wanted to take this face and uh, this face, I uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead. Let me just extrude this up one more level just so that way we can see a little bit better of how this works. So I'm going to just hold down shift, pull it up. Notice it's going to add whatever subdivision uh, I've already used in the previous face when I extrude up. It makes it easier. Uh, let me hold these two. I'm going to press delete on these faces, and then I'm going to double click each of these and press B. Okay, now, uh, here's what I've done. I've created a nice little uh, outside uh, crevice, this little canyon, I guess you could call it. Uh, and the ridge line that's above it is something that looks a lot more natural as we smooth it out. Okay, and we'll add, like I said, we'll add blended textures later. We'll add uh, some nice little features. We'll add some models uh, to be able to make sure that the player feels like they're outside. Uh, but for right now, uh, the displacement tool has provided us with a couple of different ways to use it. I can use it to create some basic terrain. I can manipulate the faces, the vertices, the edges of the terrain itself. I can use uh, the extrusion of these faces to create caves and, and little canyons and ridges. So displacement is a really powerful tool, and you just got to get uh, used to the way that it forms as you go throughout the different displacement tools that are up here. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial in advanced displacements. Uh, we're going to dive a little even further in our next one as we continue to utilize a tool in Source 2 that is extremely powerful. All right, you guys have a great day, and I'll see you on our next crash course.